today we're st uh, we're still on the topic of the, the King's Highway and how that we are in a spiritual battle. I've been talking a lot about spiritual warfare and spiritual battle because I believe everything that we see in the Old Testament alludes to our our spiritual warfare, what we're fighting, what we fight spiritually, what we're up against spiritually, not necessarily carnally. And even though a lot of people uh, look at everything in a, in a carnal way, in a physical way, uh, and that we we see, we want to see things uh, to come to pass on this uh, on this horizontal on this peripheral as being the end times, but there's a warfare that is unseen, and the Bible says that we do not fight against flesh and blood. Our our weapons are, are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. And they are, and they are, uh, they're for spiritual warfare. They're not for we. The Bible says we don't fight with flesh. Our warfare is not with flesh. Why do we think that when we come into these end days that it has to do with flesh, uh, man or mankind or men rising up against men and uh, nations against nations, in in the in what we see uh like in world war one or world war two we see that nations did we had war we had all these uh countries come together and they fought against each other but w these are just these things are not in comparison to what we're going to see in the end days because that because really those are all uh they're all manipulated anyways. Everything has been puppeteered and manipulated and uh, nothing has been done by organically or uh, it's been, it's been, uh, the strings have been pulled. There's always, there's a shadow government, you know, that a lot of people, you know, believe is conspiracy, but there is people that are, that are you know you know they are you know they are playing uh mind games with us they they are doing war strategies strategy strategies sorry that are in the physical to make us believe that everything that is going to happen is going to happen in the physical and not to say that whatever happens in the physical doesn't parallel what that which is in the spiritual because everything that is in the spiritual will manifest itself first before it'll manifest itself in the physical. But the, but the objectives are not for us to uh, fight against each other in country against country or kingdom against kingdom and, and having uh, ethnics, which it says in Matthew 24, that these things, there's uh, wars and rumors of wars and, and a nation will rise up against nations, ethics against ethnic groups. Yes, these things are, but he said, these are not the end. This is not, these are just, these are just things that are going to happen. These things are going to come forth, but they're not, these are not what we're, we should be focusing on. These things are manipulated by the kingdom of darkness and by men that in high places, in, in the higher echelons of these countries that are pulling these uh, these things together and doing these things to deceive the masses because they do not want to see this as a spiritual warfare. They do not want uh, the church to come together. They don't want the people of God to rise up. They don't want them to be strengthened for battle. You know, David said that you train my hands to war. Everything in this Bible is about warfare, and if, and we're fighting forces that are beyond our capabilities. But if we don't know that we're in a warfare, then we will not prepare for a warfare. We will not prepare our mind for a warfare. We will not prepare. We will not gird ourselves up for where warfare. We will we will lay back. And we'll be comfortable. We'll sit in ease in Zion. The Bible says the sinners sit in ease in Zion. And then they're going to be overtaken by the fear of it all. They're going to be overtaken by the deception of it all. They're going to be t overtaken by uh, by not preparing 
that everyone wants to prepare physically. They want to, they want to, uh, you know, prep physically for, for financial collapse or for mm -hmm. ma major disasters and calamity that might come upon the earth, but they're not preparing their, uh, the, the warfare that is going to take to get through the end. They're not preparing themselves for spiritual battles. We do, we're not taught how to overcome the enemy because he is, he is, been all these uh, centuries, you know, he's, he's and all since the world has existed, he, his war strategies have up and, you know, he's, he knows, you know, he knows how men work. He knows, you know, how to bring fear. He knows how to cause men to stumble. He, he's bringing deception uh, and, and he's enticing people and he's doing things and causing people to stumble because they're not aware of his his devices. The Bible says that we take upon the armor of God so that we uh, we can defend ourselves against the walls of the devil. This is why we put the armor of God on and and we, this is why we put the uh, the this word in our heart. So because this this is this word is going to keep you on this straight and narrow path. Even though Israel, it, it, we see in the Torah that Israel fought the battles and they fought the giants and they fought uh, these things that were way much stronger than they were, so much bigger than they were, so much more powerful, so much more fearful. And they, and they had a physical understanding of their warfare and they had to believe their God was stronger than those what they see. This is why we walk by... Uh, what we walk by faith and not by sight. We may not see th them, but we know the effects of the devil. We know that he is working and he's and he is causing men and women to fall into uh, in all kinds of depravity. We are fall. We're on a slippery slope to depravity and degeneration as men is starting to corrupt it, it themselves. They're corrupting with, with nature. They're, they're doing things that are unseemly. They're corrupting and, the, and nobody, and everybody is kind of sits back thinking that all oh, these things, we're just gonna escape it all and we're not gonna have to deal with it. And what can I do to, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to stop the plan? There's nothing that you're going to be able to do to stop the degeneration. You're not the degradation. You're not going to stop it. The Bible says that men will wax worse in the end. And that and the Bible says that, you know, that men will call evil good and good evil and there will be an upside down understanding of of what love is and what salvation is and what who god is they're they're going to have an upstand skewed idea who even god's mercy his grace his judgment the bible says that they would be reprobates of the faith even in the faith there will be reprobates and the bible says that the many will depart and fall away in the last days so there's only going to be a remnant that are going to stay on the straight and narrow the masses are are going with the devil. They're going with the beast system. They're going with uh, with the carnality of things. They are they are being lured in with the, with the world. But fear, Satan's objective is to bring massive fear. Mm -hmm. If he can bring massive fear upon on humanity, humanity will bow. This is how he, he can't do, I'm sorry, he cannot do physically. He has to cause men to do his bidding. He has to cause men to exercise his agenda. He's got to deceive and manipulate man to, to act in his, in his, uh, in his ways. And, you know, he, the Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he has to use humanity to do that one to another. But the Bible says that men, uh, men's uh, hearts will wax cold because of the iniquity, because iniquity would abound. And so men's hearts will wax cold. That, that's selfishness. That iniquity is, is the 
uh, it's self-preservation, it's self-actualization, it's self, it is, it is uh, putting self before uh, humanity before before anyone else and and surviving so when we get into the 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 days where now we're coming into where uh satan's going to use he's used um uh, decades to fluff up people to to put them in a, a place of dependency on the government dependencies on on their jobs they, they have joy the comforts of this life and now he's going to he's going to draw it back he's going to he's going to make us go through things that are he's going to thin out these things that we're, we're you know he's going to the the food and the water and the resources these things are going to be a, a high commodity they're not going to be easy to obtain and they're and he's going to pit men and people against each other because of their necessity. He's gonna, he's gonna, the, this uh, idea of being able to obtain it, uh, and, and have abundance, he's gonna <laughs> cause lack. Do you, and, and we're not, the people are not gonna be able to only, you know, it's the haves and the has nots. You know, he's, he's wiping out the middle class. And so the has and have not. So those who have, uh, are, are are going to continue the bible says they're going to continue don't touch the oil or the wine but those who are kind of on the uh the lower end of the middle class to the lower end to the poor they're going to covet those things that which the 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 rich have and there's going to be there's going to be this animosity and strife and warfare against classes the class, and because there, he he because before he's he's made the playing field very abundant for everyone. Even the poor is not poor. They still have food. They still have their necessity. They still have things that are given to them. They have opportunities. They have they have opportunities to succeed, to excel. They're they're given uh, tuitions. They could go to college. They have benefits for for all people to be able to to uh, progress and to excel in this life. But all these things are becoming, they're becoming less and less. Mm -hmm. And these, uh, and this is why when, when, the, when the distinctions of, who the, of the classes start to manifest itself, and when people are losing their livelihoods, when they can't feed their families, when they can't provide, and when and when that person over there are, is not suffering like they are suffering, there's going to be a lot of anger and animosity and strife. As long as the the, the basic needs are met, the you know the the basic level needs that are met for humanity, humanity don't really rise up. They're 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 content until they are starting to suffer in the flesh when they're suffering and they're seeing their family suffer then there's problems and so this is how satan does this is his war strategy he he pits us against each other and he and he uses uh the the goods of this world and the riches of this world to do it but we have to see that we can't get our minds focused on the world this is why the bible says that we come out of the world be ye separate come out of her no do not be transformed we are, we do we should not be focused on how the world it, it you sustains itself our you know our provision comes from god our provision comes from uh hit him seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so we we don't look at the world's way of survival. We look at God's way to survive. And the what God says do good to those who do evil. You know, you do the opposite of what uh, what uh, what the world would do or the opposite what the devil. You overcome evil by doing good. That's what the Bible says. So everything that the enemy wants you to do he wants you to lash out in anger. He wants you to lash out in wrath. He wants you to have these uh, uh, hatred and animosity and strife. And he wants you to be angry so that you would react in that anger. But God says, do not react, but do the opposite. Be giving. He says, 
uh, he said, if you give, I will give back unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will he give men will give into your bosom? He does not. We need to do the opposite. Because so we know that we are the children of God when we love one another, when we love the brother, when we're giving, when we're doing the opposite of what everybody else. Because Satan uses fear. Fear is a motivator to change your direction, to change your your uh your decisions that you 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 may think that you uh would not do such a thing until fear arises the fear of it all will cause people to react in ways that they should they may not react if everything was just hunky dory and everything was great because fear is a motivator hatred and fear are, are are a motivator to get men to react unseen yes. yeah and to to unseemly and and uh and make them to uh compromise what they would not compromise in in the time of abundance they will when they are in a state of fear you may say oh i will not do i will not do just like peter Peter said, I, I will not deny you, Lord. I would go to your death before I would deny you. And then when the time arrived, arrived when he had to, you know, rise up because they were taking him uh, to, you know, arresting him and taking him uh, to be crucified. And these things became a reality to him. And he denied the Lord three times because of the fear of it all. He, he, the, the, he, could, he thought he would be able to die the death. He thought he would be able to stand strong in the time of adversity. He thought <laughs> that he was dedicated to the Lord and he was going to be able to go through anything with him. But till that, till that comes to a reality in your life, till that, till that situation, life and death becomes a reality to your life, then you cannot say that you would do such and such. You, this is why you have to get a strong fortitude now. This is why you've got to be strengthened now. You've got to have a made up mind now. You've got to be committed now. And you've got to believe in this word because the, the hour of testing, the hour of temptation is coming upon everyone. And the things that we do not think we will do we will do because fear will motivate us to do things and make bad decisions that we probably would not do if we were in a in in a state of of abundance where we're not lacking we're not suffering in the body when we're not being manipulated by the enemy we can we have we can talk the big talk but really when we're facing life and death when we're facing the the trials of life when we're facing satan and his army and these demonic forces and these principalities and powers and rulers in high places then you're going to think of oh, oh, wait a minute this is way too much for me just like the children of israel did when they when they went and sent the spies out and they spied out the land and they came back with a bad report do not think that you you wouldn't feel the same way that these were they were like grasshoppers and you know in their sight. These giants were huge, and they and all they had to do is step on them, and they would have been defeated. They, I mean the the fear of it all, even though they seen the um, the works of God, even though they seen the miraculous of God, they seen God deliver them with an outstretched arm, with a mighty hand out of Egypt, and they seen the Red Sea split, and they seen man and fall from heaven. But was God able to conquer these devils? Was was God able to conquer these these uh, these big old monsters? You know, the, was God able to do? The, to, the problem is. We don't think, we think that, oh, uh, God can, but will he do it for me? Will, will he do it for me? Will I have to face these giants alone? Will I be the one having to go through the battle alone? Because we don't always have confidence in our God to go through the battles. 
go through the warfare. So we, what do we do? We, 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 we draw back because we do not think that God has our back. We don't think he has the, 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 the capabilities. He may do it for somebody or he may do it for that person or he may do, done it for the people in the Bible, but will he do it for me? That's where we lack faith. This is why we have to get in a mindset that we believe and we've got to understand that he is mightier than all these things. He's mightier. This is why it says in 2 Timothy that we're going to start because it is a warfare. It is, it is a warfare. And I think that we sometimes uh, want to just lay back in Zion. We just want to think that, oh, God's going to take care of it all. That we do not have to engage. But God is sending his people into boot camp. He is preparing his people now. If you're not being prepared now, you're not going to endure. You're not going to be able to be able, your hearts will fail you because you're not going to be able to, to physically, mentally see these things come upon the earth without your flesh failing you. Your heart and your inner man has to be stronger than your than your flesh. Right. If you are not strengthened, this is why the Bible says he strengthened us from within. He strengthened us within because our heart will not fail us because he puts us through the battles now so that our hearts will not fail fail us when the when the real warfare comes in 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 effect. But if you're not preparing yourself, if you're if you're just enjoying life if you're just enjoying the comforts of life, if you're just working your jobs and and just in and and doing what everybody else does and just living according to the world and not preparing your hearts to be to be to be able to endure to the end, you will not endure because you've got to get a mindset and a faith beyond yourself to be able to endure. This is why I teach the way I teach because I want people to see it on the the spiritual level. Quit looking at things carnally. Quit looking at things as it's physical. Quit thinking that it's some natural man that's going to rise up and and take over the world. There's been so many dictators. There's so been so many imperial governments. There's been so many ruthless ru rulers. And yes, they are they are antichrist. But they're not the Antichrist. The Bible says that what comes upon the earth is going to be worse than ever it has ever has ever taken place in in history. It's it's it's, it's going to be Im, impossible. And we can look at tragedies in the world, mm -hmm. and we can we can go through the the, the you know World War II and and people who have dealt with with so much. Uh, dictatorship and killings and and uh and and abuse that have but through you know through hitler and through all these regimes communists coming into china communists coming into russia communists coming in and nazi and all these things that have taken over the world and have caused uh, you know deaths and mayhem in the in the countries famine and disease we but the bible says there but the end time is going to nothing's going to none of that is going to be outweigh what's going to happen in the end days nothing is going to be in comparison to it do you see what i mean this is why this is why we have to get we got to get another we got to get another mind we got to get another heart we've got to we've got to be strengthened from within We've got, we got to understand our battle. We got to understand that we don't fight with flesh. Even though these uh, dictators and regimes were motivated and manipulated and controlled by the satanic kingdom, they probably even, even like Hitler, probably, um, you know, Satan <laughs> probably entered him at one point. Do you see they were fully de demonized, fully to demon possessed to be able to do what they did? But it's not going to be like the end of Messiah. It's not going to be like what we think. 
because there there is no man that we that is on the scene that can bring that much fear or wonder or that much control to the world there's not he no one is going to bow to these to these people that we think that are are somehow are you know the, the, that they're somehow the uh, animacide because of a number of a name or or they have you know these things are manipulated anything in this natural is manipulated and and Satan knows how to use gematria and he knows how to use a certain situation he's bringing out uh, scenarios to make it look like hey that could be the animacide or that can be the antichrist or that. Do you see that there, there is, that there's nothing that in them that uh, that that is like God that can that can emulate God in any way, fashion, or form. They might have a world population. They might have people of uh, people worship them on a level that is uh, that it, you know that they're they're elevated in a country or elevated in the. But that doesn't mean that everyone, the Bible says the whole world wonders after the beast. The whole world, except those who are, are the uh, <laughs> names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So, they're, because they're going to think he is God. Because the Bible says he, he acts and he sits in the temple of God, in the temple of God, proclaiming he is God and, and he's above every other God. Um, so he has to emulate God and he's got to have the characteristics and attributes as God for people to fall into that deep delusion. Mm -hmm. So it says, it says in second Timothy and it's just logic, but we want to keep it all on the peripheral. We want to keep it all on the, on the horizontal. We just want to think that it's just some, uh, figure world figure that is going to be the one that's going to stand up and take over the world. That's what, that's what these, these, uh, left behind movies. And this is what's the, uh, agenda of, of these evangelicals and all these people, the Zionists and all these people want you to believe, but, and, and they have, they have, they have written the script for you to believe it. They have written the script. And people have fall prey because it doesn't create fear. It doesn't create fear to the point that that it that it's really what it's going to be about. It, it mean it be it might be a little fearful to think uh, that this might happen. Then people are more fear about famine and disease. They're more fearful about losing their comfort as a life before more than they're fearful. Of the animasia, do you see what I mean? Because this is this this is what the, the script has been told uh, that we're going to be raptured at pre-trib rapture, and and we're and and this antichrist cannot be revealed until the church is left, and and so or you know there or we're going to be protected in some way. God's going to you know we're going to have this greater exodus where God is going to take His remnant out of the out of the nations. And that, and that, and we are all going to be somehow protected. The only protection you have is to put yourself in Christ. Out of the body or in the body, I do not know. Because I don't live in accordance to my flesh or the world or the devil. I'm in Christ. My life is hid in him. And so it doesn't matter if I live or die, I live unto God. That That's the mindset that Paul had. This is the mindset. To die is gain. That means to not to die only physical, but I, I'm, I'm crucified to the world and the world is crucified unto me. I don't live according to the dictates of the world. I have a personal walk with God, a personal relationship with him. And he tells me what I should do. And how and and where and where I should go and what should I do? Do you see? Not that I walk in in the dictates of everyone else and in the fear of it all. 
does that make sense? The fear, how the world is, you know, he, they're putting forth fear mm -hmm. and they're putting forth the script and they want you to, you know, they want you to latch onto their script. Mm -hmm. Because you, if you don't, if you latch onto their scripts, you're never going to prepare, be prepared, prepare for the warfare that is coming upon the earth. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, prey to that warfare and you're going to be defeated and the and this is the hope of satan because you'll never prevail so the the bible says uh it says uh that in matthew 16 and that uh, and, and i'll read that that jesus i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it well where is that church where is that where is that that building of, of not just a physical building, but that, that remnant of people that are going to stand and be able to fight against who is, and who be, who's, who is equipping themselves that they cannot be defeated or overcome. They're going to, they are taking, they're taking this as a legit warfare and not sit in ease and comfort in a Zion and waiting for God to, uh, to uh, you know, you know, rapture them out of here, or t or to take them out in, out of the battle, or take them, or it's going to somehow comfort them along the way. This is not a time of comfort. This is time of preparing yourself for war. Mm -hmm. As we get closer to the end, you got to gird your mind you've got to gird yourself for war you've got to you cannot be a coward and run away from the battle but you've got to run <laughs> towards the battle and be able to defeat because satanism he will manipulate and he will use intimidation and, and domination and fear to control your behaviors to control you and make you submit to his plan. If you don't stand, this is why the Bible says stand. Therefore, if done all, stand. He says, do not bow. You've got to stand. You got to stand strong. Be encouraged. You got to be, you know, be strong. Be encouraged. God did not call us to not to just to bow to everything. We're to stand against. Like I said, I don't, we don't worry about what the world's doing. We only do what God tells us to do. And we walk according to that. But we've got to stand. And in the time of adversity, in the times of testing, in the times of difficulty, we do not bow. None of the ch children of uh, uh, the children of Israel or the Hebrews that went into the fiery furnace would not bow. Those people did not bow. Though they, they, There was no, no Hebrew... All Hebrews knew not to bow. Right. You do not bow to an imperial government. You do not bow to a, a man. You don't bow to an angel. You don't bow to a, a, a it, you know, anything in this earth, under the earth, or may, you know, or even in the heavens. There's only one knee you should bow to, and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess he is Lord. We bow to him and him alone. We bow to no one. This is why we stand and we do not bow. We do not compromise. We, we are to be, be strong and, 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 and be of courage in the battles, in the warfare, in the times of distress. In the times of persecution, in the times of, of perilous times, but people don't even realize what it's going to be like. We all don't know, but I know that if you're not de if you're not dealing with him, with Satan now, you're not. He's if he's not warring with you now, if he's not testing you now, if you're not going through the, you know strategies of war now to be able to strengthen your mind, to gird your mind, to strengthen your your heart <laughs> and to put a, a, a strong fortitude and a, and a strong will inside of you. I mean, you can't, you can't just think that you, you, you're not going to bow to these things. If you're not already standing firm on other things, you've got to stand firm. Your will has got to stand firm now. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. in all things. You've got to test your willpower. Yeah. If you're not doing anything to test your willpower, if the enemy is not putting thoughts in you, trying to compromise you, if, you're, if you don't even have willpower against sin, you're not going to make it through. You have to have a strong willpower. And God puts us through these things so that our willpower gets, gets strong. That we, we, and we get, and we get a, a, an anger that is towards the enemy that is trying to prevent us, trying to stop us, trying to hinder us, trying to, you know. And so we, there's, these things are to, to uh, anything, of, anything of resistance is going to make you stronger. I mean, you don't go and exercise without using some kind of resistance to build up those muscles. You have to have some kind of weight system or uh, or strengthening system to be able to build up the the muscle to strengthen your your physical body. How is that different from our spiritual body or our spiritual uh, inner man that needs something that is resisting us? Something the forces must resist us to be able to push back and push against those things that are pushing against us so that our, our willpower gets stronger. This is why when uh, Peter, when he, you know, he uh, met Jesus after his resurrection and he says, you know, if, you know, he asked, you know, three times if he loved him. And at the third time he said, you know, Lord, only, you know, I don't know anymore. See, I thought I was strong. I thought I had willpower. I thought I had a in me to overcome. But now I failed you because I failed you in my flesh. I failed you because of fear of what would happen to me. I compromised. So am I even worthy enough? Only you know, Lord, if I have the strength to endure. To go on with you, to be able to to carry this gospel, to teach the to, to teach others what they need to be taught. Am I am, am I worthy enough? And you know, and he he was baptized in the spirit, and he was strengthened inside, and he de he died a martyr's death. So God put a put the the spirit in him to be able to strengthen him because we don't depend on our flesh. We depend on the Holy Spirit. We depend on His strength. We be, we depend on the power from within, not our own power. Right. And the Bible says that He will bring things into our memory, and we've got to Lord put the Word in us so that these things can be plotted to our memory. So when when the battles and the resistance come, we don't fall falter to the de deception or to the to the compromise, but we stand strong and firm. And what we believe. If you're not strong and firm in what you believe, you will crumble. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2, it says, No man that worth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. So we are uh, so we are to be soldiers. And and it says, and if a man also strives for mastery, let, uh, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Uh, so, so everything is done lawfully. Uh, we, our warfare, are not carnal, but mighty through God, and pulling down strongholds and, and casting down imaginations and doing the things that the enemy wore. So we we war in this spirit realm. We don't war in the flesh. And Satan himself knows that he also has to lawfully get us to bow. He has to lawfully make us compromise. He has to lawfully tell us what he's going to do. And then when we receive it, through this sigil magic and we do, and we and we just laugh at it and we think it's nothing then you give him permission to uh, exercise warfare against you when when you believe these things that are coming up on war when when we have all these outlets telling us that these things are going to happen and and everybody's like okay I'm going to, these things are going to happen, but I'm going to, you know, God's going to do this. God's going to do that. And, and we're just going to take their word for it. You're putting faith to action and you're accepting him. 
as the author of, of your life. You're not warned against it. You're not praying against it. You're not, you, you, we're all preparing carnally, but we're not prepping in the spirit. And what does God have for you? What is his plan for you? Where, what is his will for? But we're all sitting back and allowing the enemy to enslave us and let the enemy just have his way. Mm -hmm. We are not, we're not finding God's way. Because God does everything personally. So anyways, we, when we're talking about the uh, warfare, we're talking about spiritual warfare. And this is why when I was talking last week, the King's Highway, we're talking about um, going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. And during... Uh, and. The, and then we're going all the way up to here where we see Mount Hermon, where the, the uh, intrusion of the fallen angels came down and they squatted in God's land. But that high place I mentioned before that, you know, the, in uh, Psalm 68, that God's, those are the everlasting hills. Bashan, which is on the, uh, it's on the northeast the northeast of the King's Highway. Let me look at the King's Highway. This is King's Highway. And this is Jericho, and they cross over the Jordan. And this is the parts of the Bashan up into these areas. And that's the King's Highway. And that's the, uh, Bashan means fruitful. That's the land of uh, where the uh, Manasseh was, the land Manasseh was given. And Ephraim sits kind of below that. And these were given to the spiritual house of Israel. You know, the uh, where we're grafted in. This is the, this part of Bashan. And then Ephraim sits right here. But Ephraim became the firstborn. Like I said in Genesis, in, uh, we'll go to Jeremiah 31. He became the firstborn. Uh, it, of the of of Joseph's house, so he became the firstborn over all of Israel. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, "Let's see. Let me. I wrote it down here. Five and twenty-one. It says. It says, and again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with the tablets, and the sh and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria, the mountains of Samaria, which are those places up going up to the high hills, uh, where we see in Bashan and Gilead, Ramallah, Gilead, and all those places are the high places. And where you get to Mount Hermon. And these are uh, places where they can, uh, you can either connect with God or you can connect with Baal. And you see that a lot of people went, uh, of the prophets and the kings went up to the high places to commune with God. But also that they, they built groves and, uh, and altars in these high places. To desecrate those places, those portals uh, that that you can meet with God, because what they would do, they would offer up a lamb sacrifice, and they would commune one on one with God on a Melchizedek altar of unhewn stone, and they would connect, and you would see all through uh, the kings and stuff that they would build groves up in the those high places, and they would uh, and they would uh, desecrate those places unto Bel, and so that God would desert those areas. Mm -hmm. He would forsake those areas because anytime that you put, you build an altar to Bel, anytime you put a, a, an Asheroth, uh, you know, pole, Asheroth pole, or uh, uh, or any kind of Astra or anything like that, that goes up into these high places, you are worshiping another God. You're worshiping Baal as your God. And, and you are, and they're going up there and uh, you using, um, you know, sexual intercourse and sex. There were uh, prostitutions, uh, places of prostitution 
where they would go and they would join themselves through the whore, either male or female, to connect with Baal. And so they used pleasures of the physical pleasures of of sin to be able to connect. So because every time you commit sin, anytime you are uh, passing blood illegally, because what I just say, you strive lawfully. We come into Christ through the blood of Yeshua, but they connect with Baal through uh, unauthorized use of blood, mm -hmm. through bloodletting and, uh, and sexual intercourse and through sin. And then those sins, they, they get worse. They, you, be, they become, you become more degenerate as, as you participate in the acts of sin because you're you're giving uh worship to Baal. so you, when you go out and fornicate or you're worshiping idols and you're bloodletting sacrificing they child sacrifices or they do uh or any kind of uh, uh, any kind of bloodletting uh, unlawfully connects you to the realm of darkness connects you and you give worship to him this and also uh smoke Smoke is also a uh, a way of worship. You know how we burn incense. You know they burnt incense of prayers to the in the tabernacle. Well, they also use all types of smokes and uh, and pharmacia and all kinds of uh, drugs and all these things of you know to connect them with the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. You see. Even the Native Americans and the people, they would you have that pipe and vapor and all that stuff. It is, it is, and it will cause you to be infeminate because you are uh, worshiping uh, the, the whore Babylon. And that is just another avenue mm -hmm. of worship. So anyways, it says... Uh, so it says, they, uh, Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. Samaria, The planters shall plant and shall eat them as a communion. For there shall be a day that the watchman upon the mount of Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye and let us go up to Zion, Z unto the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chiefs of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye. And say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. And with them that the blind and the lame and the women, the child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications. Will I lead them and I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble, for I am the father to Israel, mm -hmm. and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar of off. That says, He that scatters Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd that the flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than him. From the hand that's stronger than him. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the heights of Zion and up in the higher places and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord for the wheat, for the wine and the oil. This is where the fruitness and the fatness of the land and, and the soul shall be as the water garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice and dance both young men and old together for I will turn their mourning into joy and I will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrows. And I will satch, uh, satiate the souls of the priests with fatness, and the people shall be satisfied with the goodness, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, a voice what was heard in Rama, lamentations and bitter weeping. Rachel, Rachel's weeping for her children refused to be comforted for her children because they were not. And when we look at that, we, that takes you right to Matthew when Yeshua, Jesus was born. And they, and because it, it says the Rachel was weeping. I think I wrote it in here. Uh, he, she was uh, weeping. 
because she had died on you know their journey back to Israel back to their homeland after coming out of Laban's house and and she had died there and her children her, her children are weeping because this these are the ones that Satan's after these are the ones that he's trying to eliminate he he does not want us to go into our inheritance so you know the weeping because the blessing fell upon Ephraim the fatness of the land, the goodness of the land, the, the abundance, the richness of God's inheritance fell on Ephraim. Mm -hmm. And he and he will do everything he possibly can to destroy those that uh, inherit that, that, that good land. Now, are we talking physically or are we just talking uh, it, spiritually? And even though it says that he will bring them out of the north country and draw them out of the ends of the earth, I, I feel like I, that we have, in, in Christ, we have a place. We're hid in Christ. Christ, we come into him and he comes into us. We are ready. <laughs> out of the body, we're present with the Lord. We have this commune with God. He sends his spirit, our inheritance. It's our, our spirit. So he is gathering his people. He is gathering them into their inheritance. He is preparing us to be able to abode with him forever. We, we go on levels of journey. We st Like I said, we stay at the foot of the mountain, but we're going up channels to where we can inherit the, the the riches and the goodness of God where we can be a bountiful in 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 God in his inheritance it's not material it's not physical it's 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 spiritual our spiritual inheritance all spiritual blessings are in Christ we obtain them in him not uh and this is a place this is the you know what we see uh on the on the surface there is a there is a, a city that it parallels what is what is on the natural so there is a heavenly jerusalem there is a heavenly existence and we are we are being gathered into that spiritually but will but the bible says uh, yeshua is coming he will call, you know he will bring all his people from the four corners of the earth he will he will gather all of us at his appearing and he will and but we're not going to pass over uh you know seas and rivers and dry places he's not going to gather his people into that land until he returns until he gathers us, he says, we will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. We'll be caught up in the air with him. And then he will bring us into that realm of the spirit where the abundance, where he abides. But we have this now by faith. We, uh, we go, we, we obtain now. We can go into, uh, we ascend in these um, high places where we are joined with Christ, where we are seated with him by faith. When we are not no, no longer working or operating in the, in the physical realm, where we are, the physical realm doesn't dictate our life, but we are, we are supernatural, we're spiritual, a spiritual man. And we, and we are now sojourners and ambassadors to this land. We have a heavenly citizenship. And now we got to think more spiritually. We got to think more supernatural. We've got to see ourselves uh, that we are in him and he is in us. And we're already obtaining the good land. Mm -hmm. But during, but through the good land, we're going to have oppositions. We're going to have resistance. Because Satan doesn't want you inheriting the riches of his glory. The riches of, his, of this inheritance. And he doesn't want us to experience these things because they 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 bring their abundance, they're joyful, they're 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 uh, more than what we can fathom, physically and spiritually. And so he never he wants to keep us 
uh, in a play, place of, 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 of oppression, depression, and warfare, striving so that we never fully come into the goodness of the Lord. The Bible says that, uh, that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I, I would say that we don't really have fully obtained at those precious promises or those those precious things because we are we're we're we're, we're double minded. Mm -hmm. We're 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 carnally minded, and we think more on the physical than we are on the spiritual. And so we're not we're we are allowing the enemy to rob us of our joy rob us of our peace, rob us of our inheritance because he is striving with us to keep us uh, on the, on this level. Because once we cross over Jordan, now we are, we are, now we're a threat to his kingdom because now we're, we have the power through the Holy Spirit to be able to move up in the things of God that bring them under our feet. We bring the powers of darkness under our feet, under our under our control. Once you cross over that Jordan, you're going to have resistance because they're not going to want uh, frail humanity to rise above them. These are giants. They, you know, these these are men of great statures or spirit beings that are stronger than. Then we were created. The, that's why the Bible says he, he took the weak things of the world to to to, to con, you know to uh, for the, you know for the the weak things of the world to confound those things that are strong, and he took the the weak things or the, the to confound the wise. You remember in that scripture, it it talks about that he takes he takes the beggarly weak things of the world, so that we that and, and it takes humility. Like just like I mentioned before, he takes the humility of, of a baby being born in Bethlehem that is going to show faithful obedience and perfect obedience to the Father that is, that is, that is working lawfully in the spirit realm to defeat. This is why it's the opposite of Satan. You, whatever Satan wants you to do, he wants you to work in your flesh. He wants you to be reactive. He wants you to work in hatred and fear. He knows if you're working and knows you're working for the kingdom of darkness. But if you're working for the kingdom of light, you're going to work in generosity, humility, and love and giving, which defeats. These are the laws, the spiritual laws for the righteous, for the kingdom of righteous. And every time righteousness is going to overcome evil, even though fear seems to be more prominent do you see and more and more uh, has a, a more detrimental effect on humanity but if we turn and reverse it and do good mm -hmm. and, and and do and do uh, and work according to the spiritual laws of the of the kingdom of righteousness good will always overcome evil right it will always righteousness will always overcome the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. It, it will light will always prevail over darkness, always. But we have to get ourselves to say, "Well, that's weak," or "That's just that's not going to that's not going to vindicate me. That's not going to validate me. That's not going to protect me. How can that protect me? Doing the what the word tells us to do. How is that going to defeat these these uh, strongholds? How are these things are going to defeat these uh, these uh, fearful resistors? Because it's law, spiritual laws will trump, and God's law will always trump Satan's laws. Mm -hmm. This is why he always wants you to work in, in fear and hatred and in the negative, unforgiveness, selfishness, because you think you have power. You think you have authority. You think you have uh, you, 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 that you're, you're overcoming your enemies through, through retaliation, but actually you become a slave to those things. So, and you become a slave to those that of your enemies and, and it doesn't do anybody any good. Right. 
So righteousness and forgiving and loving, that's why God says to bless those who, who do evil towards you. Because you're heaping coals upon their heads. That's what the Bible says. Does, didn't he not? Mm -hmm. you, there is a spiritual law. And you've got to work in accordance to that law. And you've got to decide which uh, kingdom you're going to be a part of. And when you're working in the kingdoms of this world. And you're working according to the, uh, the rules of this world. And of darkness. You're going to reap the consequences of it all mm -hmm. it says uh, it did it says matthew 2, uh, 2 and 18 in ramallah was there a voice heard lamentations and weeping and great mourning rachel weeping for her ch children and would not be comforted because they are not herod's order of all children under to murder to stop the ruler of israel so herod ordered all the children under two to be murdered to stop this Messiah, the this, this seed war that would crush Satan's head. But that, and and the remnant, was the Bible says that they come after the remnant of his seed. Uh, you know, the born again believers. Because these are the ones that are inheriting the land. They're the one that is going to get the abundance. They rose into that firstborn status. They get a double portion. Ephraim gets a double portion. And he gets the full inheritance, and he is over. Uh, he he represents the kingdom of priests, and he is over all of the kingdom of Israel. He's over all of kingdom of Israel. Like I said before, Judah is a chief ruler, and he's a prominent figure in the land. But Ephraim uh, rules all of the promised land that was given to Abraham. Mm -hmm. And so it says, and this is why he, he strives so hard because it's not a, it's not natural born. It's spirit. you have to be spiritually born again. Uh -huh. And it says, and uh, it says a great morning. It says in Ramallah was there a voice heard and lamentation and weeping. Okay, it says, Herod ordered all the children under two to murder to, uh, to be murdered to stop the rule of Israel. But that wasn't the only thing. Herod or Satan, it's one that stood in proxy for Satan, that did his bidding, did not want the Messiah to be born or Rachel's children to inherit the land of promise. Judah can't legally rule the promised land, the land of promise, without Joseph. The only reason Judah stayed in existence because of Benjamin was in the southern part of Judah. Benjamin is the right-hand authority from Rachel's house, a.k.a. Joseph's house. The birthright inheritance the Jude, it was given to, her, to uh, Joseph, her son. Judah doesn't want Joseph back to claim what rightfully belongs to him. Rightfully belongs to him. Judaism wants it all for for himself or itself. They want to be the superior ones. Rachel's mourns for her children in exile. They have been cut off from the ex external the external the et I'm sorry. They have been cut off from the eternal inheritance. Satan's goal is to destroy the offspring of Rachel to prevent the blessings of Joseph from coming to pass. His blessing is beyond the natural. It's, it's the supernatural uh, promised land. Uh, and where the abundance is. This is where the, the fatness. This is where the oil is. This is where the milk and honey flow. This is where... Uh, this is where God resides and give and gave to uh, Ephraim those who are born in Messiah. Those who are coming out of the world and coming into Christ. This is why uh, in the book of Ruth, we've got, uh, we've got Ruth that was a Moabite representing the Gentile. The Gentiles are the nations. And you've got uh, Naomi representing uh, Ephraim. And you've and it, all of Israel, and you've got Boabs representing Judah, all class of people in, in in the status that God considers a Jew or Gentile or Israel and Gentile, all are represented in the Book of Ruth, 
and are all being reconciled through, uh, through that seed line. And this is why I said last time that, uh, that the Messiah would be a tender root born or come up from, from a dry land or from a dry place because he was born in Judea, which is d down in the desert, down in the, and where, where, uh, where, where Abraham, where the promised seed, what uh, originated, mm -hmm. originated in the desert. And they come, and that, that uh, seed line of Judah that represents the promised seed that is born of the spirit will inherit the goodness of the land, the good land. Even though that part of the land was part of the promised land, mm -hmm. all the way up to Jerusalem, and you see that the plains of Jordan, mm -hmm. the plains of Jordan are are the fruitful lands, and that's not not that's even on the west side of the Jordan, where Ephraim, where Jerusalem, Jericho, and all these places, all the way from the that uh, western part all the way to the eastern part of Jordan is is that's Transjordan, and you've got the 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 Jordan valleys and all over the plains of Jordan. This is where you see uh, Ahab and Jezebel and Naboth's vineyard was in that region during around the Jordan river. And it was fruitful land. It was abundant land. It was fertile land. And, and it was like an oasis in a desert. Mm -hmm. And this is what they, and this is what they coveted was that land. But every time you bring, the the fallen angels or you've got the the resistors coming and, uh, and 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 squatting in that land because what does satan do he came uh, and he usurped the garden from adam and eve i mean i believe they went outside the garden the bible says that the tree was in the mist that word mist can be among the trees and i believe there was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil that sat right outside of the eastern part of the garden. And I believe that they, I believe everything was close. It wasn't like it was like it's now because it was in the spirit realm. It, it was spiritual. They were fully spiritually dominated, fully spiritually. Uh, they had, there was no death in them. Does that make sense? And I believe she was led outside to the place which where Babylon and those kings were those kings now resides those are the resistors the uh, the uh, the kings of the north and the kings of the south mm -hmm. that uh, prevented the children of israel to cross over and they and those are the giants that have are in the land so every time uh they get closer to the garden or they get closer to where Adam and Eve reside, those areas were uh, uh, were fruitful garden. That was the fruitful garden of pleasure. It was abundance. The Bible says the garden means pleasure. It was a clo enclosure, a land of pleasure. And when you took the, uh, I wrote it in my book in both uh, Spirit of Elijah and in the Saints or Sodomite about Jericho. Jericho was a, a very abundant land and. It, and, and they built cities mm -hmm. and, and God tore them down and then they would build another city. It was a very uh, well wanted uh, real estate mm -hmm. and people wanted to build cities. They, there was a prosperous land there. And I'm going to get into that here in a minute because even Lot pitched his tents towards Sodom, wow. towards the east and into the plains of Jordan. And so, <laughs> and because it was uh, the good land, and but it wasn't meant for them. And but say this is where this is the cynical of where Satan resides in those areas because these were the promises of God. This is where it all originated in that land. And so he came from the uh, the east, from Babylon, I believe, from the east. And when when Eve gave him a and Adam gave him uh, authority, advocated their authority and their position, he was able to come right into that garden because legally it belonged to Adam. Legally it belonged to both of them. It was their house. God put them and placed them in this enclosure of, 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 of abundance 
and they were they were uh, seduced and withdrawn out of that place and they sinned and rebelled against God and that left that place open open territory for the supernatural for the demonic for the uh, for the fallen angels and this is why when I talk about a spiritual warfare I'm talking about they have squatted in the spirit realm that parallels the natural and to prevent us to be able to come into the fullness of, of the richness of God's inheritance in Christ. Mm -hmm. Because it was because Adam was the first Mashiach. He was the first Messiah that governed over God's ha uh, handiwork, all of God's creation. He was he was God's representative. And God does not deviate from a plan. So the the earth, the earth and this area within the in the spirit realm because i believe it all was one unified place was adam's dominion it belonged to adam it belonged to the mashiach christ is over the man and the man over christ the the head of every man is christ mashiach adam was that first wasn't the, he was actually the second mashiach by first the first mashiach was the cherub in ezekiel that the anointed cherub that covered he had ranking position and he was the first mashiach that rebelled against god and god used adam as a replacement he recreated him to re replace the the cherub that set on the sets in the ezekiel 14 he resided over the mountain of god he was over the mountain of god and this is why the mountains of God is where God resides. Let me see the mountain. Uh, he was there. He was on the mountain of God. And I read it last time. This is in during, around the Bashan area. Parallel in the natural. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, this, that we're going to that land physically. I'm saying we are, we come into the inheritance of the of the eternal, the promised land of the spirit, and and the new Jerusalem, the city of the firstborn. The Bible says the city of the great king, the city of the firstborn, the new Jerusalem. It says that. Uh, let me see. First, I'll read that one of Ezekiel, and then that in Hebrews. That is not something here on earth. That is somewhere beyond what we can see, what we can experience. We are, uh, we are, uh, we are coming into this place. This is why we go through what we go through, because we're going, coming into that 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 uh, that realm where where the anointing flows, where sin and death no longer resides, has no more dominion over us. We're no longer slaves. But he has called us into liberty, into the freedom which he has provided. This is a place of liberation. This is a place of freedom that we're no longer under the powers of darkness anymore. We're, we're, we are, we, God has called us to liberty. We have the, we, we in the spirit realm where we, uh, we have freedom. God is not trying to control us. He's trying, he's trying to save us. He's trying to bring us out of the uh, the slavery of Satan. Uh, I believe it's 28, Ezekiel 28, actually. Out of the powers of darkness. Satan is a heavy taskmaster, I've said it, and he brings and he uses tactics like fear and, and evil things. It says in Ezekiel 28, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and that I have set thee so, that thou was upon the holy mountain of God, that thou walkest up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in the way from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profaned out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O cover cherub, from the midst of thy stone. Thine heart was lifted up. This is why we have to be, uh, we have to go through what we have to go through. We have to eliminate all pride. 
This is why we have to come down and be humble before we can be exalted and lifted up and promoted in God into this realm because he, all that nature of Satan's got to be eliminated from our existence. That pride has to be eliminated. We cannot be lifted up in pride. We can't work and operate in pride and be able to go into the kingdom of heaven and into, into his realm. We have to destroy all pride that resides in us. That's the iniquity, the selfishness. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled thy midst with, thee, of that, with violence, and I have sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as a profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy the oak covering cherub from the midst of thy stone of fire. And that, that uh, anointed means Mashiach, the anointed cherub. And he so that anointed cherub was the first Mashiach that 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 Adam replaced. He replaced and he became the Mashiach. But he was not an angel. God made him a little bit different, made him inferior because he takes the weak things of the world. He takes the weak things, the beggarly things to confound the oh, wow. mighty, the mighty, the wise, the giants. And this is their fight with us. How can somebody so frail, so mighty outdo us? How, how can they be stronger than we are? How can they be wiser than we are? How, you know, this is, this is why they fight. They don't, because we don't do it in our own strength. We don't do it in our own capability. We do it in accordance to God's capability and his strength. So the mountains, this, this mountain, which, what was I going to also look up? Remember? Mm -hmm. I have to go back to it. So anyways, the, the mountains, we're, we're going up to the mountains of God. Um, I love you, Lord. So anyways, let me keep going. So anyways, so Judaism wants it for themselves. They want to be the superior ones. Rachel mourned for her children in exile. This is what I read in Jeremiah, exile. They were all in captivity. We're all in the diaspora. We're all, uh, we're all, uh, been scattered. And now through Messiah Yeshua, he is, he's bringing people back into the, the, the spiritual Israel, the promised land of the spirit. He's bringing every back into their inheritance through him. Mm -hmm. But you have to come through his way. You yeah. got to come his direction. You got to come his pathway. What he did, he humbled himself. He was completely obedient to the Father. He submitted himself. He laid his life down. And he, and the pathway has to, we have to go the same pathway to be lifted up, to be raised up in God. And so we don't come across. We don't come upward. We don't come in our own strength. We come with, when we lower ourselves down and we're and we stay humble before God and we stay in perfect obedience to him he will raise us up into into this place of exaltation mm -hmm. and that's where we get we get we have to understand that we get stronger as he gets stronger in us and we have this is why faith has to be in operation because it, faith will transcend time faith elevates faith we put our faith in God, he will perform, he will strengthen us. Yes. So it is the mountains of God that, uh, that he, 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 he sits on, on the hills and the heights of the mountain. It says in Amos 4, I'm going to read that right for, where we come into this realm, place, It says in Amos 4, it says, Hear this word, ye kin, kin of Bashan, that are in the mountains of Syria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, <coughs> which say to their masters, Bring and let us drink. And the Lord God has sworn by his holiness that, lo, the day shall come upon you, that he will take you away with hooks in your posterity with fish hooks. This is this is spiritual. This is this is where they they have they have they have darkened this place. 
they have they the place where 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 the where we're to go up in God. They had they have they have uh, dark in this area, and God says that He was He says that He was going uh, hear the word, O ye king of Bashan, kind, the king of Bishan, that are in the mountains of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, Bring and let us drink. So it has made mankind a slave mm -hmm. that oppress us and to wars against us and and hinders us from yeah. coming up that's trying to destroy us before we obtain this inheritance trying to get us to compromise uh -huh. and so we'll never achieve that's what they're 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 the resistors the lord god has sworn by his holiness that lo that the day shall come upon you that he will take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hook and ye shall go out of the breaches every cow at that which is before her and ye shall cast them into the palaces says the lord come to bethel and transgress at gilgal multiply transgression and bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven and proclaim and publish the free offering and for and for this like you, O ye children of Israel, says the Lord God. And I also have given your cleansingness of teeth in all your cities and want to and once of bread in all your places. Yet have ye not returned unto me, says the Lord. And also I have withhold the rain from you when there were yet three months of the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another. One piece was rain upon and the other piece was whereupon it rained not withered. So two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, says the Lord. That sounds like sporadically God moves upon people. He will pour out his spirit on one area and the other areas of the of of of, of people or cities or towns or other are not receiving from God. They God, God is, you know, it's like he pours out his spirit upon them uh, and to show that he's still moving, that he's still in operation, but no one's no but the whole but the whole of Israel is not has not yet turned to it to to God, not the whole of God's people, not the whole of so through their transgressions and stuff he withdraws himself. He withdraws the rain. He withdraws the, the, the latter rain. He doesn't pour out the, uh, the abundance of the Spirit on those who are still in sin, still live, loves the world, still, uh, you know, is, is not given to him wholeheartedly. But he, but he, but, but he shows himself uh, faithful and he shows himself by, by giving us a, a taste of it of the rain, the, the, the pouring out of his spirit to, to, you know, to give us this, um, the, the, uh, satisfaction or satiates those areas that are been barren in people's life. You know, we, you know, we are, uh, but, but it, but it's not on, it's not on everyone. Right. Do you see? It's only on certain individuals. Yeah. Only on certain in, or, or situations, but, but they're, but they're not long-term. Is you know what I'm because no one has not turned to him wholeheartedly, right? And that's what I'm saying. So he said, I have smitten you with the blastings and the mildew, where your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increase, the pommel worm devour them. Yet have ye not returned unto me, says the Lord. I have sent among the pestilence after the manner of Egypt, and the young men have slain with the sword. And have taken away your horses, and I have made the stink of your camps to come up unto the nostrils, yet ye have not returned unto me. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrown Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as the fire bands brand plucked out of the burning, yet have ye not returned unto me, says the Lord. So God allows all this mildew and all this calamity, pestilence, and all these things to to happen to us, not to say that he does it. He withdraws himself from our from our environment and allows the enemy and allows the powers of darkness and sickness and disease and mildew because that's all they can do is destroy, kill, steal, and destroy. 
cause things to decay, things to rot away. It's it's the depravity of everything, and the you know, and the, and and then he uh, allows all of this to to be withered away, to be taken from us, to be destroyed, so that we will turn to him. And but people they do but their hearts have been their hearts are wax cold their hearts the, does not um, long for the Lord they they turn in bitterness towards the Lord instead of turning in humility and and seeing their own sins as a as the problem to their calamity seeing that the sins of the world is the problem of their complaining. Uh, calamity and, st and and their uh, and their and their but devastation. They, they want to blame God for everything. But you know, God, uh, you can't worship and serve the God of all gods, the God of creation, with a contingency, with a with a, with some kind of IOU or uh, on on this. Only if uh, you uh, if only if you are do such and such, you know. Right, yeah. yeah, it's a it, we we'll always have a. We always uh, have a contingency to our to our uh, devotion or mm -hmm. our faithfulness or our commitment to God. Right. It it's never with faithful obedience. Never what to you know, what to what it yeah. It's if not. You should praise God whether He does anything for you or not. Yeah. Well, it we always have a a, a, a you know well you know we it, it is we don't like. I don't think people like consciously say, well, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I serve, they, they pretty much go into serving God, knowing that they're going to serve God, you know, with their whole hearts. But it is a proven fact when, when trials comes, when difficulty comes, when, when a uh, loss comes, then there's, then, we, then there's a contingency to your relationship. I only ha have a relationship with you on the basis of what you do for me or how you treat me or how I feel about you in this situation. So, I mean, I, you know, I have to say this, if my relationship should not be based on my circumstance, right. it should never be based on, uh, on, how, uh, on what you're going through, your trials, your difficulties, your, your pain, your sorrow, your loss. Because our relationship to to the God of gods, the the, the God of heaven and earth, the, it shouldn't rely on right. our circumstances, good or bad. And so that's why you have to get this uh, this because a lot of people's expectations are going to be lost because when things don't go exactly the way they expect, and they do experience the loss and pain and suffering. And things are not working out according to their will, then they're going to say, "Well, well you, know, you know, they're going to get, you know, they're going to reverse their loyalty and faithfulness to God, and they're going to turn that into bitterness, and that, and and in the wrong run, you're only serving God for what, uh, for the breads and the fishes. Right. You're not serving God for for who He is. You're not you're not giving Him reverential fear because He's God that can send you to hell." That you know that can that can destroy you know the Bible says that fear fear the one that can send you to hell. Don't fear the one that can destroy the body, but fear the one that can send you to hell. We don't fear. We don't have a reverential fear of God to the point where it, it, that's why it says that through is it through distress, through tribulation, through uh, persecution, what, what will separate us from the love of God? With these things, because God knows that will famine, will pestilence, will all, will any, will any of these things separate you from your love for God? He still loves us here, regardless what we go through. His love never changes towards us. He's He's already did what He's going to do to save us. Mm -hmm. He's already gave His only begotten Son. It is uh, it's up to us. Are we going to allow those perilous? difficult times separate us from our love that we have for him and our devotion to him that's the question and sometimes it can get very difficult and we sometimes lose heart and sometimes we feel like well you you have deserted us something sometimes we feel 
we're being treated unfairly or this, you know, why, if I'm doing all that I'm supposed to do, why are these things happening to me? Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to go through these things, but God is not looking for, he's not looking for, uh, he's not looking for you to sustain life here on earth. He's not trying to make your life perfect here. Right. He's trying to get you to have the character within you that is the character that he is a re uh, he wants you to have to to obtain heaven. Right. That's what he wants. He mm. wants you to have the character, his character. He wants you to have his likeness. He wants you to have his his image in you so that he he can receive you into his realm, mm -hmm. into the kingdom of heaven. And uh, like uh, V.H. Clendenham, he said, you go through the things that you go through is to, God is driving out the desire, uh, the de undesirables, the ones that are not gonna make it through, the ones that are not gonna <laughs> stay faithful, the ones that are not strong, the ones that are not courageous. Those are the ones that are compromised. Those are the ones who love the world and not him. He is, those who try to join with the, with the army of God and are not, uh, and, and, and claiming to know God, but are, but, but are, that, but will retreat in the times of adversity. He does not desire for those to be in the army of God. Right. Because they are, they are not going to, they're not loyal to you through the hardships. They're not going to be loyal to you mm -hmm. at all. Right. And, you know, and this is a war that is, it's life and death. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, we're, we're in a warfare with an enemy that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. This is a matter of life and death and eternal life at that and eternal death and we've got we've got to surround ourselves with people that are loyal and dedicated to the cause and not going to retreat in the time of adversity right and so it says uh so he had all these things he brings all these things to your past to you know to get us to turn to him wholeheartedly but we we would not and it says, so he takes all these things away. And it says, I have overthrown some of you as God overthrown Sodom and Gomorrah. And ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me, says the Lord. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And I, because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. For lo, he that formeth the mountains, and created the wind, and declare unto man what is in his thoughts, and maketh the morning darkness, and treadeth he treads upon the high places of the earth. These places, these portals, these gates, the the, the elevated places. The Lord, the the God of hosts, is his name. So he he treads on the on the uh, upon the high places of the earth. So. The, this is where we've got to get to. We've got to get to the high places of the earth. And the only way we get to the high places of, of the earth is through Messiah. Mm -hmm. And it, this is why we can't, we're not going to uh, physically inherit that promised land. We got to <laughs> inherit it now. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, now. We got to go up. We got to we got to move up in God. And it says, going back to the book that I was reading, it says that uh, Judaism wants it for themselves. They know that spiritual laws are are in place. They have to obey the spiritual laws. Satan knows. He's got to he's got to strive, even though he's a crooked uh, entity and he does things unfair. And he has no, and he, and cruel, he still has to work within the laws that God has placed mm -hmm. to, to make it come to pass. Mm -hmm. And be, so he's got to deceive and he's got to cause mankind to relinquish their power and authority in the earth and give it to him. And give it to him. 
and it says, and it says, they want to be the superior ones. Rachel's mourned for her children in exile, that they have been cut off from the eternal inheritance. Satan's goal is to destroy the offsprings of Rachel to prevent the blessings of Joseph from coming to pass. His blessings is beyond the natural. Judy, Judy, Judah went into Babylon captivity, and then came back full of Gnosticism. This corruption started way before then. God restored them for a season to bring them in, you know, to bring them in, bring in the Messiah, Yeshua. But the nation was also banished into the nation. Judah has no cha uh, change. Judah has not changed since the time of Herod. It's apostate. So they have not turned to God. They have, they have mixed false worship into the pure worship and they are a breached people. They don't worship and they rejected the Messiah. They rejected their way of salvation. There is no gathering of Israel back to a homeland of natural Israel. The breach has been closed in by Yeshua, Jesus. And I get into how that happened, but I'm going to just drop down uh, how God, how Yeshua brought all, I mean, all of Israel, all of Israel and then the Gentile world and Judah all was in the land during the time that uh, Yeshua was in the land. And when he died and he went on that cross, he, he reconciled everybody to God by the cross. And everybody was represented during his time. I believe the Samaritans were half uh, Israelites. They were part of Israel. They represented the house of Israel. The Samaritans did. There's proof that they were part of the Israel uh, that were scattered in, by the Assyrians that did not leave their homeland. And then we've got the Gentile world, and and uh, which he, he came to save the world, the Bible says. The Bible says that he came to save the world yeah. and Judah. So all of Israel was in the land during the time that Jesus was uh, came and died on the cross. So natural Israel and Judah in their unfaithfulness to God of Israel, they played the harlot among the whole world, the whole entire world. Jesus mentioned uh, you know, in, in Hebrew, is um, in four is a door. And it says, uh, so Yeshua, Jesus is that olive tree made of the olive, is the kingdom of Israel. Yeshua is the, uh, has transferred all this stuff into the realm of the spirit. Uh, I'm just skipping around. So the natural is the natural olive tree and the spiritual olive tree. And he reconciled all of the natural olive tree and 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 turned to now we are the Israel of God that we come into a spiritual kingdom. Now this is a spiritual olive tree mm -hmm. that is represented by Rachel. Mm -hmm. The natural olive tree was uh, and the natural kingdom of Israel was represented by Leah. I had to get into that. So, anyways, I'm not, uh, we'll keep going. It says in strong concordance, Ramada is a heel. The, uh, the Hebrew or origin Ramah, Ramala is a town of Bethlehem on the borders of Ephraim, about five miles to Jerusalem near uh, Gilbed. Gilbed. It's a latitude by definition, the angular distance of the place north or south of the earth equator or of the celestial object north or south of the celestial equator used, uh, usually expressed in degrees and minutes. Ramallah is a Palestinian city in the central West Bank located six miles north of Jerusalem. Samaria was revived as an administrative term in 1967. Then the West Banks was defined as the area of Judea and Samaria. The entire area of north of the Jerusalem district is called Samaria. Samaritans of antiquity after the Babylonian captivity and the times of the building of the second temple, according to a history of the Jews by Solomon Grazel, the Samaritans who lived in the northern north of Judea demanded the rights to participate in the rebuilding of the temple, but the Jews refused. The reason for the refusal is important. The Samaritans were amongst almost as Hebraic, was almost as Hebraic as the Jews. 
They were, in fact, descendants of the tribes of Israel's Israel, who kingdom had been destroyed in 719. Foreign people, the, uh, the Kushites, settled in their territories, which the Jews went into exile, lacking spiritual guidance. They, the, these mixing Israelites permitted their religions to degenerate, even becoming half-hearted in their beliefs in one God. At the end of the era of Second Commonwealth, the Samaritans were lost to the Jewish life. The descendants of the Israelites were li that who lived in the north of Judea not only refused to join the Jews, but <coughs> even became their deadly enemies after Ezra and Nehemiah had rejected their corruption in the uh, national rebirth. On Mount Gerizim, near the ancient city of Shechem, they built for themselves a separate temple. Nevertheless, despite their hostility, the Samaritans also reflect the influence of the scribes by adopting a portion of the Hebrew literature. To this day, the, their sacred writings are the five books of Moses and the books of Joshua. These people of Samaria were aware of the Messiah through Torah. When the time came for their Redeemer, the women recognized the price of redemption was at hand. The women represent the northern kingdom. So in, in, I get into Luke seven thirty seven, how the woman that uh, came and, uh, and fell at Yeshua's feet and poured the oil on his head and his feet and got him prepared for the, uh, uh, the uh, death and burial of his crucifixion. I get into it how she represents Israel as a harlot. She was a harlot and and she came and she broke her uh the oil, the the alabaster box, which an alabaster box or perfume was a a, a way to draw men to her as a harlot and now she was pouring that oil that perfume on Jesus getting him ready, understanding that he was going to die and be buried. And, sh and God, and it says that Yeshua forgave, it says the sins, your sins are forgiven. And they that sat and meet with him began to seat with, uh, with him, who is this that forgives sins. Also, they faith had saved thee, go in peace. So he forgave Israel. This was God's way of forgiving uh, the the 10 lost tribes or the nation of Israel that went into idolatry and that went into captivity. She represented the whole house of Israel that went into harlotry. Ephraim, that was separated unto idols, which was idolatry, which is adultery, spiritual adultery. And this woman in Luke 7, 37 through 50, in my opinion, represents the whole house of Israel that went into harlotry. And Yeshua, at, as God, forgave the woman's sins and restored Israel back to the Father through him because Israel was divorced. Uh, uh, God gave a, a, a letter of, a certificate of divorcement to Israel. And now he that now they can come into Yeshua and Messiah Jesus and be restored and be married to him mm -hmm. as as their husband because Torah explains that you know in Torah that you cannot if you can't go back to your original husband if you have played the harlot and you've married another man and you play the harlot and you cannot go and he gives you a certificate of divorce and you cannot go back to your former husband after playing after playing the harlot tree, but, you know, being, uh, uh, you know, being in connection with another husband. Uh, so there's, there's reasons why Jesus had to come and he had to, and, and, and to restore all of Israel back to the father. Not only did he restore Israel back, he restored Judah back and he restored the uh all of the known world all of the world back to the father all the gentile world all who who wants to come can come into him and this and so and all the stipulations that have been made in torah have been reconciled through jesus and i, I know there's a lot of teachings on that 
So this is why, you know, Jesus, they come into him. And so, but, but, but Rachel burial place is in Bethlehem or in that region mm -hmm. in, in the Southern part of, of, of Judea that has been given over to Ephraim that, uh, that is, that keeps her, her burial scepter and Benjamin keeps, uh, them in balance so that they can rule because, uh, Judah rule, you know, quite a bit of a, the extension of time in the land without the, uh, Northern tribes being in op operation. But with Benjamin being there, and with uh, and her scepter being in the in the southern part of Israel, made them legal to be able to act as a, as a monarchy in the land of Israel. Yeah. But but because Joseph has to be in the land, a representative of Joseph has to be in the land for them to legally rule. Without Joseph, they are, they are illegal. This is why Yeshua comes and restores both houses of Israel. He restored them at his, second, at his first coming into him and reconciled them through the cross. But he's restored them not to, to a physical kingdom. He restored them into a spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of heaven where there is no bloodline. But all the promises of God are yes and amen. And he's fulfilled all of his obligations and all his promises and all the prophecies that are being given in the prophets about, concerning Israel and Judah. Right. And their kingdom and how their kingdom would rise and their kingdom would be prominent and their kingdom would be the light of the world. But it only can be through Jesus, Yeshua. That's it. It can't come in any other way. It's through his kingdom that these promises are exercised mm -hmm. and, and administrated through, through the nations. And so this is why we, we don't, we're not seeing something in the natural. We've got to come in the supernatural to experience this. Mm -hmm. so, the, um, so the people of the Samaritans were aware of the Messiah through Torah when the time came for their redeemer. The women recognized the price of redemption was at hand. The woman represents in Luke 17, or Luke 7, I'm sorry, northern kingdom of Israel. Also Judah, the southern kingdom that would be grafted in through Joseph or Ephraim's blessing through Messiah, the kinsman redeemer. The tribe of Judah king would redeem all the brethren like Joseph in the land of the foreigners. Both houses went into exile to to the nations before, uh, because of idolatry or, or adultery, the spiritual adultery. The throne of David is eternal, and the kingdom had been dispersed like corn sh uh, scattered through the earth. The reconciliation of the kingdom started when Yeshua forgave the woman of her many sins. She laid at Yeshua's feet, needing a kinsman redeemer to restore her back to the inheritance. A remnant of Judah was in the promised land, but the other tribes were scattered. Jesus is the only rightful heir to bring them back from exile and return them to the olive tree. The scripture says that the natural and the wall of olive branches were cut off. Yeshua, Jesus is the tree of life and the root is Israel. His kingdom, Jesus is his, uh, his kingdom. I'm sorry, Israel, his kingdom. Yeshua Jesus is our only hope of being restored. The footstool recognizes the scepter of Judah as the king over all of Israel in the realm of the spirit. Bethlehem, Judea is the place Yeshua, Jesus was born during the time of the Feast of Trumpets, which represents the announcement of a righteous king of Israel coming to repair the breach of Leah and Rachel. He satisfies the restoration of Judah and uh, Joseph the heavenly kingdom is being gathered together into one house by joining in Messiah. Yeshua is the fulfillment of Abraham's covenant. We know Messiah or no man. 
We know Messiah no more according to the flesh. Yeshua died and raised seed for the dead, which are the seeds that make up the kingdom of Israel. And we are also raised up in the resurrection power of Yeshua to be seized into the inheritance to the promised land of the spirit. So it says, uh, so this is all about resurrection power. It's about uh, being born again. And the physical kingdom of Israel and Judah died, and they had become a byword, a byword amongst the nations. Did they not exist on the natural realm any longer? The kingdom of Yeshua can't be seen with natural eyes. The rest restoration of all things will be in Messiah at the closing of the age when the heavenly kingdom comes to be joined to the earth. So we have scripture in Ezekiel 20, 22, and 23, and Ezekiel 20, 33, and 42, showing that we... Uh, there is going to be a gathering, but I don't believe it until the, it's until the, when he comes back and he will gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. It's not something prior to that, but, I, but I do believe there's going to be supernatural things that will occur and God will protect his, his people to an extent because we do make it till the end. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's all about, you know, it's about, you know, how much are we going to endure? How much are we going to, uh, you know, be engaged in the warfare of what's happening and understand that our inheritance is Christ. Christ abides in us now and we go into this realm of the spirit now and he's gathering in us first in the spirit realm before we physically obtain this inheritance. Uh, let me go back here. Uh, and it's by faith. It's a, it's, it says the natural, uh, the unnatural event shows a spiritual reality. The grafting in process of the whole house of Israel during the Jubilee year can be, uh, be done in the spirit realm. The Lord returns you to him and removes your debt to Satan's kingdom. The Holy Spirit was given during the Shavuot to prepare you for the gathering of the seventh month at the day of atonement. It is the promise of transformation to change you into a heavenly citizen of a land of promise whose builder is God. The Israel of God is now redeemed by the blood of the lamb that makes you the inheritors of Israel's promises. We are the property that was enslaved by Satan's kingdom, but now are returning to our creator as his very own property. So we, this is what is, we're being restored to his realm, not this realm. Uh, and that's where, and everything had to play out, like I've said before, in the natural, before it could be set up in the spiritual realm. And this is why, uh, this is why his kingdom and the kingdom of priests had to be established here first on the earth. Mm-hmm. And then uh, so that it could be uh, transferred into the spirit realm. So there is there's hope for all of us yes. in Christ. But anyways, uh, this is why the Bible says. Let's see. That we are being established. In Mount Zion, in Hebrews, not that we're he's established anything in here. We come to the city. The city is. The city of the firstborn, which this is, God saves his firstborn. E Ephraim is the firstborn and that he is saving. And we get to be part of that. And this is why that it, that land is so coveted, that that spirit realm is so coveted by the, uh, the satanic kingdom. Let's see, let me find it. Where is the city of the firstborn? The new Jerusalem. 
What is in he what is it Hebrews? I can't find him. Uh, but it says in Hebrews 12, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, mm -hmm. which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirit of just men made perfect. So this is what we're being restored. We're not restored into something that is down here you know it's not physical we are our this is why our spirit man is being resurrected so that our spirit man our new man can be caught up with him be gathered with him and we can experience these things now and these are what the apostles experienced they experienced this life of the spirit the promise of the spirit these this is the inheritance because those who walk after the Spirit and are led by the Spirit and, are, and have already been caught up in the Spirit man into the heavenly realm, they have already experienced in their, in their flesh, their flesh are being weak and their flesh is being persecuted. Their flesh are, is going through difficulty, but their spirit man is being lifted up. This is why Yeshua, when he uh, went, the Bible says that the spirit led him to a mountain. Mm -hmm. And there he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And he was tempted by the devil. Because he was moving up in these channels in the spirit man. And his physical condition didn't outweigh his spiritual elevation. As he fasted, as he lowered himself, as he disciplined his body, his spirit man was lifted up, up towards God. Mm -hmm. And he and then he went into the channels of the kingdom of darkness because the Satan was able to tempt him and show him all the kingdoms of this world and test him with bread, test him to get him to compromise. And so he had to go up the same avenue, mm -hmm. up to the same channels. And it says in First Peter... Uh, let's read some of these scriptures. It says, one, two, it says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto the obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance, to an inheritance of incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. This is not something that is we're, we're, uh, that we're going to get after death. We have been born of an incorruptible seed. We get to be partakers of his divine nature and and it's but these precious promises are restored and reserved in heavenly places mm -hmm. just like yeshua had to come out you know being baptized he was be, he was baptized in the jordan and now he was crossing over the jordan river and now he was moving his way up into the realm of the spirit and and he was being elevated in god and satan met him at the gate yeah. He met him at that at that the crossing of the Jordan <laughs> when he was going up to those high places. And I also says in uh in Genesis it says in Genesis and I'm going to get into the set, this last part, but it says in Genesis Way people down with a lot of scripture. But in Genesis, it says that Lot looked towards uh, Sodom. And 
and he and and when and he uh it says let's see It says, and um, saw, it saw in Genesis 19, and the lot went out and spake unto his son-in-law, which was married to his daughters. So let's go back. So uh, he looked towards Sodom uh, and, uh, and because the pleasant lands, and he wanted to uh, abide there. It says, uh, and then God was coming down now, and he was about, and he's going to judge Sodom. And, uh, and so, um, through uh, Abraham's um, intercession, uh, God was going to remove Lot from this city that was about ready to be destroyed. And all the five cities around was about to be destroyed. And we see this in the pictures here that Sodom is by the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is right here. And you've got all the five cities right here, which are on this side of, of the Jordan. And the plains of Jordan are kind of like up here, the plains. And this is where uh, Lot had uh, pitched his tent. According to, you know, around here through Jericho, this is the first uh, city that was captured by Joshua, which is on the west side of the Jordan, which would had a pleasant land. And so around uh, the Dead Sea is where we see that uh, in, uh, around the plains of the Jordan is where uh, Lot reside. And it says that the angel told him to move to, uh, to uh, go to escape because he was going to not only destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but he was going to destroy the cities around it. They all had fell into uh, depravity. And it says, let's start with, um, and the, let's start with the 15th verse in the 19th chapter. And it, when the morning arose, then the angel hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. It, to me, iniquity is not lawlessness. It's, uh, it's selfishness, selfish desires, unrestrained desires, selfish, you know, the, where we uh, only think of self and where we bring self in a realm of godlike status, where we we oh, uh, we worship self as 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 God, and we do as as we wish. So they were a city, a prosperous city, that uh, that were that was thriving, but they uh, but they were self seeking people, and they oppressed the poor, and they uh, and they only lived according to their their needs they became animalistic in their behaviors and their behaviors were out of control and so god had to judge the city because their act of lewdness and their and their perversion uh, and it said because it was unrestrained and it was debauchery and abom abominable and it was uh, against nature and it says and it says, uh, and while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hands and upon the hands of his wife, upon the hands of his two daughters and the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and the, and they set him without the city and came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad and said, escape for thy life. Look not behind the uh the neither stay thou in all the plains escape to the mountains lest thou be consumed and lot said unto them oh no oh no not so my lord he did not want to go up into the mountains up uh, because he was oh he was already in the plains over here like i mentioned before he's already over here in the plains of where those fallen angels were the strongholds over across Jordan, up to Jordan, over the plains of Jordan. And he knew going up the mountains, he was afraid to go up into the mountain area because he knew that there was something there that was a lot stronger than he was. Mm -hmm. And he knew that if he traveled up those areas to be the escape the, the judgment from the south, 
and escape, uh, escape north up to the uh, mountain region, that something was going to consume him. So it says, Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil take me, and I die. So he had he was fully aware of their occupation there. Fully mm -hmm. aware of the uh, of the occupation that was taken reside in in this region. Mm -hmm. And so and it, it frightened him and he knew that they would kill him and say behold this day is near the, to flee and it is a little one oh let me escape thither is it not little one and my soul shall live. So he escaped in a place called Zora, Zora, and which is in the south. Let me look at it. If the south is kind of around here, down south of the of of the five of the five cities that were going to be destroyed around the Dead Sea, he was around there, and he was going to. And that's where he escaped, and God uh, relinquished his plan to destroy that city, so he could go there. And that that city is called little one or it, the or it, uh, insignificant like an inf insignificant city so he you know so he was you know was in a thriving uh city and was prosperous and doing very well and 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 he they were living according to the abundance of the land and now he was being made low into a place called insignificant, <laughs> little. He was being brought low to a very uh, small place, some place where he w was exalted. He had he was recognized and uh, regarded in his city. Uh, he and he had influence in his hometown. Had money. He had influence, and now he was being brought low into a place but god told him that hey go flee into the mountain he said no way strongholds are there I, i'll be consumed so i will die there let me go somewhere else and he took him way down low south which that city was also scheduled to be burnt up but it was probably the ghettos they <laughs> where we would consider the ghettos and, and, you know you've got your places of prestige and and uh, wealth, and then you've got your ghettos, and that would be, I would say, the ghetto of the surrounding cities that nobody would want to, because it was in the desert. So, anyways, he was he was brought financially to the lowest spectrum you can possibly go, and you know, and this affected the a uh, lot considerably. Mm -hmm. To be uh, to to be removed and extracted from his position and placed in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah and, and his uh, life there, and because uh, you know he you know he did not leave on his own. Even though the Bible says that righteous Lot was vexed every day concerning the the the, 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 the depravity in Sodom. He didn't leave and go back home. He didn't cross over and go back and <laughs> abide with Abraham. He stayed in that city because that city had a stronghold on him. That city had wealth. That set, that city had a, a had a, hit the you know the life that he craved and he wanted to be in. Even though he probably wasn't part of the the the, the sexual depravity, he still was consumed by that area. And, it, and and what it offered. And so that's why, and then God brought him down to the, to the lowest part of that city. So anyways, and so it says, and he that escaped thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be th uh, gone. And therefore the name of that city was called Zorah. And the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. And the Lord reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire, from the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up and early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord, and he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and towards all the land of the plains 
of the plains of Jordan, where the, where the abundance of the land was. This, I, the Dead Sea, I believe, came into existence during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah because it, they, it rained fire and brimstone and it became a heap of salt and which went and destroyed the Dead Sea where that sea area probably was a very, par it was probably paradise with palm trees and beautiful oases with blue, uh, with nice beaches and blue water. But now it became a dead, a dead city. It became a heap of salt. And so, and, and the salt got into the water and killed all the vegetation and all the life that was surrounding that area. And so, and I believe that's when the Dead Sea became the Dead Sea during the time of this uh, destruction in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so, and God scorched it. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards all the lands of the plain. And behold, a low, a smoke of the country went up as a smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plains that God remember Abraham and sent Lot out. And midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. And the Lot went out of the Zorah and dwelt in the, he, dwelt, he went into the mountains, somewhere in the mountainous place with his two daughters, but not where they where he was supposed to be originally and he ended up dwelling in cave in a cave with his daughter and this is where we get the moabites and the amorites they say but i believe they mixed and the amorites and i said last time that that one of the kings that abraham fought with was an amorite king but there's to, uh, I guess there's different Amorites. There's one that spells with one M and one that spells with two M's. And one, the one with two M's it came from the incestual relationship with, uh, with Lot, the daughter, both daughters, Moabites and the Am and Ammon, Amorites were, come from that. But I believe they are, are a mixed race with the giants because they dwell in those lands of the east and they became uh they became a part of the uh part of the uh tribes that fought against Israel and compromised Israel and was part a part of the uh, resistance that was uh coming against Israel so they had are joined with that race of giants i believe and they became a stronghold against the israelites and this is why when we see that uh when jesus crossed over the jordan river that he met satan the adversary because he was moving up in the spirit realm so anyways so this and that's why i believe lot did not want to go up there because in the natural these things were manifesting in real time and they were experiencing uh the the kingdom of darkness in real time but now we do it in in the in the realm of the spirit we don't we don't see these things we they we see uh we we see their effect but we're but we're and as we grow in grace and as we grow in the spirit and and we start to experience more of God in our life as we draw near to him he draws near to us we will get those same resistance from those same forces they may not be physical but we see them we feel them we get we we experience their effect in our lives and as we get closer to the end of days the bible says in uh that you know in the you know we are in the evil day you know the evil day there's a day and there's days coming for each believers that are we're going to experience where we're experiencing the forces that are that are worn against us, the principalities, the powers, and rulers and stuff. And so you will be able to stand against the these powers in the evil day. I mean, they're they're definitely there for a purpose. They're there for a reason they are they're not just uh governing these areas of the spirit realm for no reason but as long as you're not moving up 
in 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 and possessing your land, possessing your inheritance, they're not going to fight against you. It's those who desire to take the land, those who desire to take the promises of God, those who want to come into the realm. They're 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 dissatisfied with the carnality. They're dissatisfied with the 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 the. The ways of, of the world, they, they want more of God, what God offers them. They want to see the supernatural. They want to live in the supernatural. They want to come into the supernatural, into the realm of the spirit, where they're not walking according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. This is why when we get into the Deuteronomy and Numbers, we see that they became the, the, the kings of the north, became a, a factor when they when the children of Israel was crossing over mm -hmm. and they when they came crossing over they were experiencing uh these heavy hitters the kings of the east that uh that was resisting them this is why we are being trained up we are being trained up because our deliverance is on the other side of Jordan. Our our way of escape is on the other side of Jordan. We you know we if we're we're if we don't our freedom is on the other side of Jordan. This is where the abundance of our this is where we get our weapons of our warfare. This is where we get endowed with power. This is where we get close to God. This is where we experience His glory. This is where this is where we get connected with God on a personal level. As we draw near to him, we draw he draws near to us, we become intimate with God. He knows us by name. He knows us. And the spirit realm also knows you by name. <clears throat> and then that's where that's where, that's where the resistance is going to come. And it says in a numbers, it says And it started and it says, and in the 21st verse, and Israel sent a message, uh, a messenger unto Sion, king of the Amorites, saying, let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the field or into the vineyard. We will not drink of the water of the well, but we will go along by the king's highway. And that king's highway I showed is up the Jordan River from Sodom all the way up to Mount Hermon until we be past thy border and Sion would not suffer Israel to pass through his borders but Sion gathered all his people together and went out against Israel into the wilderness and came to Zehez and fought against Israel and Israel smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed his land from Haran unto Zaphoth even unto the children of Ammon, that's the, uh, the Lot's daughters, the descendants from Lot's daughter, and from the borders of the children of Ammon was strong. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbron, and in the village thereof. And from Heshbron was the cities of the Sidon, which means he, that word uh, King Hazan means warrior or wiped out. So they, he's there, that king is there to wipe you out. Mm -hmm. he, is, he is to take you out of commission. He is not, he is there, he's placed there, that principality, that king, that ruler is there to make sure you don't go any further to in, in that area, to your promised land. So he's there to wipe you out and he's going to war against you. He's a warrior king of the Amorites and he had fought against the former king of the Moabs and takes all the land out of his hand, even unto Ammon, Wherein they they spake in Proverbs and come into Heshbron, let the city of Shalom be built and prepared. And for there is a fire gone out of Heshbron, a flame from the city of Sion. It hath consumed all the Moabs and the lords and the high places of Aram. Woe to thee, Moab, thou art undone, O people of Shamosh. He hath given his sons that escaped and his daughters into captivity until Zion. Sion, the king of the Amorites. So he is there to wipe you out and and to make sure you don't get in. He, he abides 
Let me get that. And the he's the king of Ammon, and Bashan is right above it. See, Amorites are right here. And then you've got the pleasant land, Bashan, right here. And then you got the Moabites that are down here. So this king right here is keeping you from getting into the pleasant land. And he will war. This is like the, the king that is not going to let, is, is preventing you to that stronghold, that principality, that power, that ruling gut, uh, over that spirit realm, over that portal, over that gate. You got to pass through the king's highway. The king's highway is this, this side of Jordan. This is the king's highway to get up into the Bashan where the fruit, fruitfulness of the land in the, the high mountains where the high places where God abides. He, the Bible says the Lord walks on the hills. He, 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 he walk, he's in the high places mm -hmm. and he is there to meet you because he knows those strongholds get, they get more difficult. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So as long as, so as long, you know, the, the, the Lord is there to meet you. So that's why the Bible says that he, he, uh, he, he, he's in the thick darkness that God, you know, he dwells in the thick darkness because he's no darkness is in him, but he's there to meet you, our commander to pull you through to the, to the, to your promises. He, he, he wants to meet you. He comes down to that level where he can bring you up. Mm -hmm. But he's not coming down here. He wants you to move up higher so he can pull you up where he's at over heavenly places. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, but he knows those forces get more hot when you get more up in this area. And so he, he and I'm going to get into that. So this is why we... We, that's the king, and it says, the kings of the Amorites, we have shot at them at Heshbron, and he perished even unto Dizbon, and we have laid them waste even to Nophar, which reached unto Medela. Thus Israel dwelt in the lands of the Amorites, and Moses sent a spy out in Je Jezreel, and they took the village thereof and drove out the Amorites that were there, and they turned and went up, they went up by the way of Bashan, which is fruitful, uh, against the king of Og. Og means a, it means long neck, which also means a hearth, a hearth of fire. Mm -hmm. So when you get to, uh, past the Amorites, now you're going to go to Bashan, and there's a hearth of fire there that is going to scorch you, try to, to prevent you to come. And against it, and all the people to the battle at Adrel. Ed, and the Lord said unto him, Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand, and all his people, and all his land. And thou shalt do to him as thou didst unto Sion, king of the Amorites, and dwelt at Heshbron. So they smote him and his sons and all the people until they were was left him alive, and they possessed the land. And it says, and so they possess the land. And then they, what they do, uh, it says in the next chapter, and the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on the sides of Jordan by the by Jericho. So they they fought against the resistance. They went and they captured the, this land and they went up to where Bashan was and, and, and destroyed those kings. And then he, they stayed within the plains around Jordan and uh, area. Uh, in the middle, and that, and they set tent there. And it says in Deuteronomy, let me go right quick. And it says, it says, then we turned and went up to the way of Bashan, and the Og of king of Bashan came out against us, and he and all his people to battle at Eshbar. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all the people and his land into your hand, and thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sion, the king of the Amorites. And so the Lord our God delivered into our hands a Og, also the king of Bashan, and all the people. And we smote him until none of was left to him remaining. And we took all the, his cities at the time 
where uh, there where was no city, which we took not from them three score cities and all the reign of the kingdom of Og, and all these cities were fenced with high wall gates and bars. All these cities were walled up cities, gates, barred up strongholds, unwalled towns, and great uh, with great many. So they they had re, they had forces, they had resistance, they had they had barricaded themselves in those lands. Mm -hmm. So they they had been, so these strongholds were bar barricaded in that, and this is why we get such resistance. This is why we, we got to pray and fast. This is why we've got to seek God. This is why we need His deliverance to be able to push through those bars. But all the cattle and all the spoil of the sea we took and pray, and we took all the time of the hands of the two kings, those two principalities and powers that stand against the utter promised land, and the Amorites and the land that was on the side of Jordan. From the rivers of Aaron unto the Mount Hermon. Mm -hmm. So we're going all the way up to Mount Hermon, which Hermon of the Amorite, uh, Shinar, and all the cities of the plain, all of Gilead and all of Bashan, Shechem, uh, the king of Og, and Bashan, and all the kings of Bashan remain of the remnant of the giants. Behold, they're the, you know, so these are the kingdom of darkness. And his bedstead was the bedstead of iron, and it's not in Rabath, the children of Ammon. Nine feet was the length thereof, and four cubits of beneath of it, and after its cubit. And it goes, if you go down, and it says, And this land which we possessed at that time from Aram, which was by the river of Aram, half Mount of Gilead, and the cities thereof gave I unto the Reubenites, the Reubenites, Uh, and all of Bashan being the kingdom of Gog, if I gave unto a half tribe of Manasseh. Manasseh's up here. Remember, forget. His name is, help me forget, forget. Cause that, cause God is going to wipe them out. And it says, and it says, and all the region of Agrog, where's the Bashan, which was called of the land of the giants. And Jaron the son of Manasseh took all the countries of Arab and the coast of Gilar and called after his own name, Bashana Valtar, unto this day. And I gave Gilead unto Mekar, and unto the Reubenites, and unto the Gadonites. And I gave from the Gilead, even unto the rivers, around half of the valley and the borders, even unto the rivers, which is the borders of the children of Ammon. The plains also, and Jordan, and the coast thereof, from Shinreth, even unto the seas of the plains, even the salt sea, which is the Dead Sea, under Ashtaroth eastward. And I commanded you at this time, saying, The Lord your God has given you this land to possess. You shall pass over armed. You, you need to pass over armed, well equipped, well protected, before your brethren and the children of Israel, all that meet you for war. So, this is why we battle. We're battling and we're because we are moving in higher places. We're moving in the realm of the of of the satanic kingdom where they want to to prevent. They they do not want you to come into your inheritance and they have darkened those areas. Mm -hmm. Bible says in Isaiah when we read a few a few of these things that they're dark this is, uh, it may be abundant. It may be the land of promise, but darkness surrounds it. And darkness abides there. This is why darkness has to be dealt with because they are, they're squatting in God's territory in their, in his dominion, in his place. And, but he gave it to Adam. This is his inheritance. And it is going to take uh, Adam's lineage to possess it mm -hmm. with his help. And this is why Jesus was born. This is why he came as a man. Because he is our commander. He's the one that's going to lead this command up against that highway to destroy those powers that are rightfully belong to Ephraim. And the, we, the victors get the spoils. We get the spoils that come from our from the uh, the warfare 
and we and we will expand in in the life of God. And it says uh, in it says Isaiah nine one it says nevertheless the the dimness shall not be such as w was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali afterward did more grievous afflicted her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in the Galilee of the nations the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light this is Yeshua. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nations and not increased the joy. The, thy joy before thee according to the joy in the harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoils. We get the victors. The victors get the spoils. For thou hast broken the yoke of the burden and the staff of his shoulder and the rod of the oppressors as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and the garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. And the Bible says that he makes his uh, ministers as flames as fires. Mm -hmm. So and because of this, this, uh, king of Og himself is a fire and our fire has to consume that fire does that make sense mm -hmm. and with burning and fuel of fire for unto the child is born unto the son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder the government the government of not of this world not necessarily but the government that is the, that has been been outlined in the spirit realm that we do not see we're not privileged to know what is behind the the natural what is set up in the unseen realm that is ours for our taking and that they have coveted how they have barricaded do you see what i mean they build up wall cities and gates and strongholds and put forces up there so we never obtain for every battle of a war is with a confused noise and the garment rolled in blood, but this shall be with the burning of fuel of fire. For unto a child is born, and God always uses the weak things, the small things, the weak to destroy the, the strong. Until the son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and the peace, there shall be no end. Mm -hmm. uh, upon thrones of David, upon this is his kingdom <laughs> that they're trying to overcome. <laughs> they're trying to overtake. They're creating an insurrection with with uh, Adam's lineage to overthrow the governments of the unseen. Uh, upon the kingdom and in order to establish it with the judgments and with the justice from there henceforth for uh, even forever the zeal of the lord of hosts will perform this the lord sent the word unto jacob and it hath uh, lightened upon israel and all the people shall know even ephraim and the inhabitants of samaria that say in their pride and stoutness of heart the bricks are fallen down but we will build do we not do that? Ephraim, the, the, the pride of this world, the pride of, this, of, of people's heart. When God tears down, do they not say we will build and we'll build back better? Mm -hmm. Because we are the great master builders. Uh -huh. Because they want, to, they want to take place of God. They want to rule in power. The bricks are falling down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore, the Lord shall set up adversities and resign against him and join his enemies together. So, uh, so that anyways, they, this is, you know, this is a warfare that is beyond the natural before, before, um, so we're, uh, so we're all, we're all looking in the natural thinking that this warfare is somehow just going to be you know it's just going to stay within this realm stay within these planes but there's a there is a warfare going on in the heavenlies yes there is a government in the heavenlies that uh, that satan is after he's not 
He's he's already got mankind enslaved. He but these things of the heaven are been given to mankind. This is why the Bible says he, that Jesus calls us brethren. That he we are joint heirs with him. We rise up into this realm in the in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and we rule. The Bible says we rule angels. Mm -hmm. There's things that are beyond our physical, beyond our that are are unseen. Yeah, that are of the unseen that that we can't perceive. Right. Or do we we are privileged to know because the Bible says the secret things are given to those that God to the prophets to those who are faithful to God. Right. There's things that are hidden. But we have but we have to fight our way into those places. Yes. And this is why it says that we have been darkened, our minds have been darkened because it's the spirit realm that has been been hidden from natural man. And it says Romans um, uh, Romans 1 21. It says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Mm -hmm. And charge the and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like unto like to corruptible man, and birds and creeping four footed beasts and creepy things. Wherefore God has given them up to uncleanness through their lust of their own heart and dishonors their bodies. So they are they are been given because they knew not God and they and it says who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So this is why our foolish minds have been darkened because we have, we worship the creation more than the creator. And God is not going to share his inheritance with those who do not have not given him their, his, their full hearts, their full, their full lives. Right. And Ephesians 4, 17, it says, So it says in uh, it says this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that they they he henceforth walk not as Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feelings have given themselves over to unto lasciviousness. To work all uncleanness with greediness. So uh, those who eyes have been darkened and uh, been given over to the realm of darkness, they will they will uh, they will be judged in accordance to their alignment with the kingdom of darkness. This is why God is training us to fight the good fight of faith, to rise up in power and to possess our inheritance and the precious promises of God because we do this day by day. Our faithful obedience, our faithful uh our prayer, our you know, the things do not things are things that we do, they're not uh taken for granted. They they're they they have their effect. They're building up the spirit man. They're building up us internally to be able to take on the powers that that are trying to prevent us to inherit the goodness of the land, our, and and to come into our uh, our our, uh, our our inheritance. You know, the apostles knew that there were there they had, there was more to achieve in this life and then the life to come. They had this. They had this uh, connection with with the Father, with this and with the Spirit, that they they that nothing in this life uh, could take it, them away from it. They were willing to die. They were willing to give up their lives. They were willing to to uh, to forsake all to obtain this inheritance. They they were privileged to know the abundance of it all. And we 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 have been short sighted. We have we we have come. We've been ignorant. Satan has done a good job in suppressing the truth about where, where who we are in God and what God has promised those who love Him. 
and uh, unfortunately, many are going are are, are forfeiting their uh, their inheritance for this temporal life. And it says in Zechariah 10, I'm going to end on this. Ask ye the Lord to reign in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them a shower of rain to everyone that uh, the grass of the field. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the di diviners have seen lies, and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. They went. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Because of these false shepherds and these uh, uh, and these uh, lying vanities, giving us lying vanities and telling us that our inheritance is of the world. And they have kept us from the spiritual growth that is necessary to get into this realm of the spirit. My, uh, mine anger, it was kindled against shepherds and I punished the goats and the Lord of hosts has visited his flock, his house of Judah and has made them as his uh, goodly horse in the battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail and out of him the battle bow out of him every oppressor together and they shall be as mighty men these are people who want their their wants to possess the land these are people who want to to forsake all god is going to raise them up to be mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets of, in the battle and they shall fight because the lord is with them and the riders on the horses shall be confounded and i will strengthen the house of judah and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to a place, <laughs> place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and will, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as though wine gave. Their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord, and I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in the far country, and they shall live with their children and turn again. And I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt, or the known world, and gather them from Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead, which is the high places, and Lebanon and the places shall not be found of them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction and shall smite the waves of the sea and all the deeps of the river shall dry up. And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down and the scepter of Egypt shall be depart away. And I will strengthen them in the Lord and they shall walk up and down in the name, in his name, mm -hmm. Jesus name. says the Lord. Because he will be with us to walk. He meets us in that in that that cloud of darkness. And he's a light in the midst of darkness. And he will strengthen us to bring us into that place. And bring and walk up and down the king's highway in the name of the Lord. Because wherever our foot shall trod should be ours. Be mine, the Bible says. And it says that right here. It says, uh, I believe it was... Let me look right here. One more thing. It says, The kingdom of God is given to the believers by inheritance to them who hear and obey God's voice. We must be able to hear what the Spirit is saying and have ears to hear and eyes to see how to operate in the kingdom of God. God will develop our ears and eyes to discern from the Holy Spirit if we obey His commandments. And are led by him. We grow in faith as we hear and obey the scripture. Even if God commands individual in a way that cannot be, uh, can be embarrassing or difficult or dangerous. Even to uh, possible cost their life, cost their lives. Who wants to be counted faithful until the end will, will obey regardless of circumstances. The scripture says believers are hated and ostracized for the sake of the gospel. God is looking for a kingdom of righteousness. Right. So it is it is a king, he's a king of righteousness. God brought uh it says in Deuteronomy 8, 5 and said, Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasten his son, so the Lord thy God chasten thee. 
Therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his way and fear him. And they said unto Moses, speak in Exodus 20, 19 and 22. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, fear not for God is coming to prove you. And his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness. He drew near the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, thus thou, thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. He moved up in through the thick clouds, through the thick darkness, where the realm, where the satanic realm resides. God brought them together to make a kingdom of priests who would hear his voice, but instead they were afraid of God's voice. This is what most people are. They're afraid to go up those channels because of the fear of, of the satanic kingdom. God wants all believers to draw near to him, but the people stood afar off. They refused to go up, go into the thick darkness or the spirit realm to receive from him. Instead of hearing for themselves, they choose a man, Moses, over God. Yeah. Moses went up That's into like heaven. Are. Moses went up into heaven, like the Bible says, and God's uh, presence reflected in his countenance. The thick darkness is the shadow picture of the warfare from the principalities and powers in the realm of the spirit that stand against believers that desire to draw near, mm -hmm. to enter into the holy of holies. Believers must pass through the to enter God's presence. We must be warlike for our inheritance, just like Jacob. The kingdom of Israel extends beyond the physical and always had God as their king over his own inheritance. At first, Saul experienced a heavenly gift and was partakers of the Holy Spirit, but Saul <laughs> tasted the good word of God and the powers to come, mm -hmm. but then he got into himself. So anyways, the kingdom, uh, the kingdom unifies under Saul's rule. So, anyways, we are to uh, we are to go up to that realm where the where the spirit realm where there is untreaded territory. It is darkness. It is fearful, but we we don't go alone. Right. We go with uh, with the uh, with the commander, the chief, the Lord by His name. We defeat the powers of darkness right. by His authority and His power in Yeshua's name. Amen.